Hello everyone, I am Dave, also known as Azure DM. I am here today to kind of help demystify a couple of the object creation quirks in Moho. I'm using Moho 12 debut. This also applies to all the other versions of Moho 12 and probably to Moho 13 as well. I'll be timestamping each of my examples uh, below. So if you already know what I'm talking about, then feel free to skip ahead. So let's get started. So if you've been using Moho for even just a couple of minutes or you've gone through the great tutorials that are available here under the help menu and the included PDF, uh, you probably already know how to create objects, but it's important to know that objects can be lines or fills or both. So I'm going to turn on auto fill and auto stroke for the line tool. I'm going to set the width for 10 so you all can see it really well. And I'm just going to create a couple of objects here. Here's the first one. As you can see, it worked exactly as predicted. I'm going to turn off autofill now, and voila, we have a model with just the outline and no fill. I'm just going to turn fill on, and no surprise, you've got an object with a fill and no outline. Next, I'm going to turn both of them off, and absolutely nothing fills. Now. All of these are objects. They are selectable with the Select Shape tool over here. And in fact, if I click on that, something interesting is going to happen. This shape is going to disappear. That's because since it has no specific fill or stroke, it is not a selectable object just yet. The rest of these, you can click on them and they turn checkerboard. And it's important to note that this one, because they were created together, they checkerboard at the same time, both the interior and the outline as well. So just keep those basic rules in mind as we move along. Now the basics of fill, of course, you can fill, you can do a fill, a stroke, or both. So if I use the same defaults, it ends up looking like the first figure. I'll just hit the undo. If I use stroke, it looks like the second one. If I just fill alone, it looks like the third one. All right, so that's the, that's part one. Let's continue on. Second tutorial is that the fill tool is different if you click on the center or on the outline. So I'm going to demonstrate a normal fill on an object that's already been created. I've got my green here once again. Let's change that to blue just to mix things up. And I'm going to click on the inside of this particular object, and unsurprisingly, it, uh, it fills like normal. Now what a lot of uh, users have noticed is that occasionally when you use the fill tool, a bunch of extra dots appear. Uh, this is, there's two reasons for this, and here's one of them. When you have two objects overlapping like this, Moho works kind of like the fill tool in Microsoft Paint. All it does is it starts throwing out color until it finds a line. Now, because it's a vector program and not a bitmap program, instead of just adding pixels, it has to create an entirely new shape. So I'm going to use the fill tool again, set just for fill. I'm going to click in this area here between where there's outside of the overlap between these two objects. And voila, you get that big jumble of dots that uh, you get when this sort of thing happens. And what's interesting is this is this outline here, this does not belong to either of these two original objects. If I go back to the manipulate tool, I can drag this completely off. If you're already done with your object and you've already applied bones and things like that, it's not going to make too much of a difference, but people really hate seeing all of these extra dots. Now let me demonstrate a way to get around this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a fill to this other object over here. Oops, they're overlapping. Ah. Okay, here we go. So let's apply a normal fill to this object, and now we're going to overlap them again. To work around this peculiar fill effect, what you can do is you can click on the outer edge of the object, like so. But there's an important difference. Note in this upper object, the fill goes, the fill stops at the line, whereas on this one, the fill goes all the way to the middle of the line. And this is because when you use fill on an object using just the outline, it creates two fundamentally separate objects. So you can see the outline has its own independent checkerboard and the interior has its own independent checkerboard as well, even though the two are manipulated together. 
Now, to go back to the originating look, what you can do is you can use a tool that's found here under the Draw menu, which is to raise or lower shape. And if you've ever used PowerPoint or Publisher, it works exactly the same way. So I'm going to lower the fill, and it's probably going to take two or three times. Let's see. Come on. You know, we'll just go lower to back. And there we go. And now the bottom figure looks exactly like the top figure, with the fill going all the way to the outer edge. For objects with different colors, work from the outside in and avoid reusing points. Now, when you, uh, when you want a single object composed of similar lines, but you want it to be all interconnected, uh, there's a couple ways you can do this. One is you can create an entirely new object. You can create an entirely new object, like so. And then using the Manipulate tool, just drag it to the inside. And voila, you've got connected objects with different colors. Now, if you want them to share an outline, uh, it's important to work from the inside out and avoid reusing points. So I'm going to draw a very exaggerated connected object that reuses the points over here on this one. And I'm going to just set it's just for auto stroke because it gets a little quirky if you use both auto stroke and auto fill. Now I'll use the fill tool, set it for red, width of 10, watch what happens. I click on this object, and once again you got this big blob of added, of added dots. And once again, that's something I can just completely drag off. Now why does it do this? Uh, let me do a, another demonstration here right quick that will help explain why. So we'll do this one. We're going to do something very similar over here, but we're going to add some dots and not reuse the ones that we already have. Go back to the fill tool, it's red, and as you can see it works just fine but with no extra dots. Now can I explain why it does why this happens? I honestly have no idea. But if you need this figure to look like this figure again, you simply maneuver these other dots. Oops maneuver these outside points to the inside and you adjust the curvature and voila you have the same figure with two extra points instead of the same figure with an entire jumble of extra points and a fill laid on top of it so again work from the inside out uh, if you want multiple colors and avoid reusing points let's say you want to do the opposite you want to fill an object with a color, a texture, or a gradient, but you want to add some lines on top of it. So let's start by adding color here, and let's layer a gradient on top of that. Gradient, there we go. Pretty simple. So let's say we want to put some lines on top of this. For that, we work the opposite way from the outside in. So I'll go to my Add line tool, make sure I'm set only for auto stroke. And let's draw a line across here. And voila. We've got a line that goes across, but it doesn't break the gradient. The gradient stays intact. I'll do one more here. This time using new points. And again. Lines appear. Sometimes the lines don't appear. If that's the case, use the fill tool with only the stroke turned on and then you should be able to click on them and then they will appear. Now, I don't do this very often anymore. Uh, what I do instead these days is I tend to use texture maps. Uh, I'll draw these in Krita using the wraparound mode and just um, fill them in. And I, I actually think it looks a lot better, a little bit cleaner. Anyway, pretty simple. Now, the fill quirk you can actually exploit that to produce some surprisingly complex shapes. Um, and a lot of other vector drawing programs actually already do this, especially CAD programs and certain 3D programs, I think Blender does it, where you can take one shape and use it to take a bite out of another one. So we're going to grab the fill tool. We're going to fill with green this time. We've got this rectangle here with a bunch of circles overlapping it. So let me use the fill tool on this interior space, and voila we have that exact shape. Let me go to manipulate and drag this out. And if I were to put this over like a black background, it would almost function as something like a Kirby Crackle. 
you have this nice negative space that's uh, cut out. Now let's try that same trick over here. Basic triangle. This is a fundamental object that you can create. So I'm going to hit fill once again and drag that out. And you've got a three-pointed ninja throwing star. Let me give that a stroke. Pretty interesting. Now this is also a helpful tool for creating very natural looking shapes because, for example, our own moon, when it's a uh, crescent or waning or waxing, it's really just the moon but with the Earth's shadow cast over it. So, so we got our moon over here and we want to make a crescent out of it. Click on the interior area and we got a nice crescent. Pretty simple. Or if you want something more like a Pac-Man, click on the other one and drag it out. So you can actually use this quirk to produce very complex objects very quickly. Anyway, that's all I had for y'all today. Um, the whole reason I'm doing a tutorial today is because I'm working on some much more uh, complex assets for future videos, and one of them pretty much occupied the entire two weeks. It's a, it's a bit of an art upgrade. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching, and check out my other videos. See you next time.